so I'm gonna make a simple Cambodian stir fry. So this is um, a dish that eat at home maybe like once a week and um, and we'll change up the protein. So today I'm making it with pork, but the base of the ingredients, my mom would make it with chicken. You can make it with, with beef. Um, never tried a tofu version, but I'm sure you could probably do a tofu as well. But today I'm just gonna do a simple little pork stir fry. It's called cha krung sakmon. So krung is this lemongrass herb paste that um, I pre-made. Because I make it, I always make it in a big batch anyway, so I always have extra left over to use. It's sort of the base for many Cambodian dishes. So it's a blend of lemongrass, garlic, galangal, turmeric, and lime leaves, and then crush it all together in a mortar and pestle. And so I'm going to use it as a base of a stir fry. You can use it as um, in soups. We use it a lot in um, in curries as well. And then I usually like to add a little bit of celery with this dish for freshness and for crunch. And then red bell pepper for a little bit of color. I'm just gonna quickly chop. And we're gonna throw the veggies in at the very end because we still wanna keep that crunch and that texture. is similar to a curry paste except it's not full of chilies and it's unseasoned it's just the base the ingredients but much like a curry paste you do want to cook it down a little bit um, before you add your ingredients I'm just gonna heat up my pan a little bit of oil right. just let that heat up and then I'm gonna add the krung paste let it cook down for a little bit before I add the protein. And I won't use all of this, so I'm just going to use a little bit of it. Two and a half tablespoons for just about a pound of pork shoulder. I'm just going to cook it down. We're just looking for the color to darken a little bit, but we don't need to cook it, cook it down for too long. Just looking to get the moisture out a little bit as well. And then I'll add the pork. It's starting to dry, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic. A little bit more oil. in the pork. Add a little bit of salt. A little bit of sugar. And some MSG. I usually do this in more of a non-stick pan, so I'm just gonna have to add a little bit more oil sticking a little bit to the pan. So once the pork cooks a 
little bit more. I'm going to add prahok. So prahok is an ingredient that is used in Cambodian cooking a lot. Um, it's one of the ingredients that really does differentiate Cambodian cooking from its neighbors in Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos. So prahok is a fermented salted fish paste um, and so you can have it in a really actual like solid brick paste form um, or I, we've been able to find this more of a saucier version so it's not as intense as the actual paste itself. So I've been using this Pan Thai brand, it's from Thailand but it's just a little bit saucier um, and it adds this very so salty taste but also again this very umami flavor that's just unique. You could substitute for fish sauce, but it's just not quite the same. Um, so yeah, this is one that, again, krung and prahok are kind of two very common ingredients in Cambodian cooking that are used in so many dishes. You can do make this dish with chicken thighs, chicken breast, um, a very common dish um, that you'll find is the krung sauteed with chicken, chicken liver, and chicken hearts. And then add a little bit of jalapeno pepper to it as well. And if you did want spice, you can certainly add some Thai chilies. Cambodian food is generally not super spicy. Um, if you want it spicy, it's really to your own personal taste and you usually add that at the end with either hot sauce, sambal, or freshly cut up chilies. But most of Cambodian food itself um, isn't super spicy. So even like our curry, our red curry, um, is beautiful bright red color, um, but it comes, a lot of that red color comes from um, ancho chilies, which are which are not as spicy, that are dried, and you get the color to it. So yeah, so Cambodian food is a, kind of another differentiator between Cambodian food and Thai is Cambodian food's not generally super spicy. If you like spice, you add it on your own as a condiment at the, um, at the end of the dish. I'm gonna start with a tablespoon. So brahok is very intense in flavor, so if you're not used to it, you kind of just want to layer it in there. So I'll start with one. I know me and my taste, I will probably end up adding another one, but we'll start with one for now. I'm gonna add some oyster sauce. Oyster sauce goes in every stir fry, just gives you a little bit of that smoky sweetness. It's just about a tablespoon there. And we're just gonna do one more tablespoon. We're pretty much almost done, so I'm just gonna add the veggies now. Let's try the celery in there. Red bell pepper. And you were saying with the vegetables, you add it at the end to keep that crispiness in there? Yeah, because I want that crunch to it. I don't, you know, we don't want soggy vegetables, so I like to add it right at the very end. And with celery too, celery is really high in water content, so, um, you know, if you wanted a saucier stir fry, I'm just gonna let it cook for a little bit to see how much water comes out of the celery before I decide if I wanna add any extra water to make it a saucier stir fry. But yeah, well, this is pretty much it. Like this is why it's usually a dish that we have almost, you know, every week because it's super quick um, to make. Usually make it in a big batch and you always make grung in such a big batch that yeah, so like, you know, one evening we'll do it with pork, another evening we might um, make it with chicken and play around with different vegetables. As I mentioned, you can sub the bell peppers and celery and add eggplant, Thai eggplant, sorry, Thai eggplants is very common to add in here. You could do jalapeno peppers instead of instead of bell peppers and celery. Um, you could add a lot more fresh herbs in here as well. You could do this with, um, with Thai basil and mint instead of veggies as well. So it's kind of, once you sort of get the base of your krum paste, your 
seasoning with the brahok, salt, sugar, MSG, and oyster sauce, you can really play around with this dish. And when you're tasting, you actually want it to be saltier, a little bit saltier than you think it should be because we, we always serve it with rice and rice is gonna be, again, it's gonna be quite bland. So when you have your stir fries a little saltier, you have it with the rice, it's gonna balance out. So you always want your stir fry to be a little saltier and, and just really with any Cambodian dish, your main dish, you always want it to be a little sweeter, a little saltier, a little more intense on its own because you always have it either with white rice or with rice noodles, which is going to, um, yeah, just balance and complement those flavors and make the dish a little less intense when you have it with, the, with your starch.